Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, a lot's happened in the last 24 hours. Apparently, Julio Cesar Chavez has the same problem that Carl Frotch has. He's been running off at the mouth, right? And I'm talking about Chavez Jr., not Sr. Right? Chavez Jr. apparently was unimpressed by Janady Golovkin's victory over Martin Murray. Right? So, he, of course, said that he would be willing to bet Golovkin a million dollars. That's right, a million dollars. Right? On a fight between him and Golovkin, if Chavez Jr. gets by his next opponent, Andres Fonfara. Right now, let me say this. The Golovkin people did not hesitate. They've actually accepted the million dollar bet. Right? They said, let's hope Chavez Jr. signs the contract this time. Now, we're about to find out whether Chavez Jr. is like Carl Frotch, who called out Bernard Hopkins, got his offer accepted. And then backtracked, said, hey, what's in it for me? He's an old man. I don't want to fight him. I don't want to risk my legacy. Right? We're going to find out, <laughs> right, shortly, if Chavez Jr. is going to do the same kind of retreat. But let's talk about that fight. Let's talk about why, in my opinion, you don't want to take a side in that fight. Rather, you just want to bet distance. That that fight doesn't go the distance, right? Let me say this. I made a video yesterday where I made the argument that, in my opinion, the guys who would give Golovkin trouble would be smaller, quick-footed guys with defense, right? Active defenses who can get close to Golovkin but also be too far away from Golovkin, right? The model I suggested was Pernell Whitaker against Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., who Golovkin and his trainer Abel Sanchez have modeled the fighter after, right? I personally thought Pernell won that fight. In the books, it's a draw. I can tell you, I was in Mexico watching that fight. I was maybe one of two at most black guys in a pack hall, and I can tell you right after that fight happened, several Latino men came up to me and said, Lo siento, right? I'm sorry, right? Guys started apologizing. I'm not kidding. This is right after that decision was reached, the draw. Guys started apologizing to me. Now, the point is this, whether or not that fight was a draw, Pernell Whitaker's style troubled Chavez to the point where it was obvious as you watched the fight, right? My point is that Pernell Whitaker style would trouble Janady Golovkin. I think Golovkin would have a problem with a shorter guy who can get underneath him. A guy who can hide his body by bending at the waist, right? A guy who would be hard to find in the ring. I made the argument that taller guys are probably easier for Janady Golovkin. Because Golovkin is a guy who likes to operate from distance and he likes to go to your body. We saw with Martin Murray the height worked against Murray. I believe the height would work against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who, unlike his father, is very tall, right? So, keep in mind, Chavez Jr. has several strikes against him. First, Chavez Jr., in my opinion, is too tall. Janady Golovkin would be able to come inside and pick his spots, right? Chavez Jr. is too much upper body. He tries to fight like his father, but understand his father could get away with it. His father's much shorter, right? Much shorter. So the father could crouch a little bit, reducing his strike zone, the area in which he could get hit, 
right? If Chavez Jr. does the same thing as his father, right, he's going to have more to hit. That's the first thing. The second thing is understand Chavez Jr. hasn't been in the ring for a long time. He's been having a promotional feud. He hasn't been in the ring. So he's going to be rusty. How many rusty fighters are you going to take against Gennady Golovkin? Right? Let's be real too. Chavez Jr. is talking about having Golovkin come up to 168. He's saying, hey, come to my division. Here's a question. How long has it been his division? Hasn't Chavez Jr. just now arrived at 168? Let's talk about the big names he's fought at 168. Carl Frotch, no. Andre Ward, no. Anthony Durrell, no. Aren't you noticing a trend here? James DeGale, no. He hasn't fought the big names at 168. In other words, he's a big name in boxing because of what he did at 160. Not 168. Now, I'll agree he's a naturally bigger man than Gennady Golovkin. You know that just by all this weigh-in drama with Chavez Jr., right? The night of fight, Chavez Jr. sometimes has been in the 180s, right? He's a bigger man. But understand, has Chavez Jr. really taken bigger punches? At 168, he's fought Brian Vera, right? Brian Vera isn't the puncher. Gennady Golovkin is. Now, is he? How do we know that Chavez Jr. is prepared to take out the punishment that would be coming from Golovkin? Right? I don't think we have the answer to that. So to me, right, whether he beats Fun Farah or not, and that fight's competitive, right, I think Golovkin poses a real challenge for Chavez Jr. Now let's talk about why, in my opinion, Chavez Jr. poses a real challenge for Golovkin. It's because Chavez Jr. can fight inside. Look at this Sebastian Zvik fight. You're going to see Chavez Jr. gets him on the ropes, smothers his game. Right now, Golovkin is front foot. Have we seen him pinned on the ropes? Have we seen him backed up? I thought there were times in the Murray fight, and Murray has something like 12 knockouts in his career. Right? 12. Not big power. I thought there were times in the Murray fight where Golovkin got hit and seemed to feel his punches. Where Golovkin got hit with some shots and had to pause for a little bit. Just because a guy's a hunter... Does that mean he knows how to take shots? The jury's out, folks. I simply haven't seen the Golovkin fight where he's been in with a puncher like Chavez Jr. who's committed to taking out Golovkin's ribcage. Right? Bullies don't like to get hit back. What happens if Chavez Jr. lowers his shoulder Right? Somehow gets inside on Golovkin and starts going to Golovkin's body. What happens if the guy who's cutting off the ring is Chavez Jr.? So I'm going to be blunt. Right? I don't know who's going to win that fight. I think Chavez Jr., if he shows up as Chavez Jr., in other words, if there's not a lot of ring rust, if he brings his A game, I think Chavez Jr. has a chance. Right? What I do think I know, even though, you know, neither guy has been stopped, is that somebody would get stopped in that fight. I don't view either guy as that defensively gifted. Right? I just don't. I have questions about both guys if the bullets start flying.
right? Because we know both of these guys are going to go looking for each other. You know, I have questions on what happens if a guy gets in on Golovkin and is ripping his rib cage. Golovkin doesn't like to clinch you. What happens if he has to clinch you? Right? I've seen other bully types. Mike Tyson. Get in trouble in fights and not have the survival skills. Right? I know we criticize Tyson's corner justifiably for the Buster Douglas fight. But look at Mike Tyson in the ring. He didn't know what to do with Buster Douglas. He couldn't tie up Buster Douglas. Mike Tyson was accustomed to having Bone Crusher Smith and other guys grab him. He wasn't accustomed to having to grab an opponent. You'd be surprised too how guys who don't really throw a lot of jabs, they're throwing power shots, right? They're accustomed to being the hunter, being the puncher in the ring. You'd be surprised how these guys, when they're buzzed early in a three-minute round, have no clue how to shoot a jab, stay away from you, right? Survive, run. They can't even run. Right? Because they're so accustomed to you wilting, they're not accustomed to the bullets coming back. So, if it's announced that Golovkin is going to fight Chavez Jr., that would be a must-see fight for me. Whatever I'm doing, I'm going to have to watch that fight. But I'm not going to pick a side. I'm just going to say that someone's going to get knocked out. Right? Believe it or not, in Vegas, that's enough to make money. You can show up and say, I'm going to take both guys by KO. Or, I'm going to take the underdog simply to win the fight. Hedge with the other guy by KO. And you'll be surprised how you can get a payoff. Just betting on the pace of the fight and the conclusion over the side. So pay close attention to the Golovkin Chavez talk. Understand, Golovkin just faced Martin Murray in front of a few hundred people. For all the hype with Gennady Golovkin, he's not the cash cow in the sport Chavez Jr. is. Right? So that fight, if the two sides actually agreed to fight, could get signed in five minutes. Right? The biggest venues for boxing would love to have that fight. Right? Pay a close eye on it because it could be Golovkin's entry point into the 168-pound division. Also, let me say this too. You know, I believe Golovkin's people have studied the game of boxing. Understand, Abel Sanchez has had many other champions. He was a champion for uh, he was the trainer for terrible Terry Norris, right? Golovkin has a very experienced group around them, right? Golovkin himself might understand that smaller, quick guys would give him problems, right? If he's in with a Chavez Jr., understand Chavez Jr. In my opinion, lost that first Brian verified. Right? Chavez Jr. has a problem moving around the ring. Let's just say he doesn't move around the ring and he doesn't have the defense of a Floyd Mayweather. Right? So don't be surprised if Golovkin decides, hey, I'm going to take this challenge. Let me close by saying this. Miguel Cotto. I know Golovkin has been talking about fighting Cotto. Cotto would be a difficult fight for him. Because Cotto with Freddie Roach. And you need to look at that pairing. It's recent. Cotto with Freddie Roach is moving around the ring a lot more. Look at the Delvin Rodriguez fight. Right? Of course, look at the Sergio Martinez fight. Cotto's much more mobile. Cotto's much shorter than Chavez Jr. Right? Cotto's getting back to that left hook to the body. You've just heard me say that I have questions about 
How Janady Golovkin reacts if a guy gets inside and starts working his body. Cotto has a small strike zone. Right? Golovkin might be better off fighting Chavez Jr. than Cotto. If he loses to Chavez Jr., then he can say, hey, you know what? I'm still the middleweight champion. I'm going to go back to middleweight. I fought a bigger man. The public will buy it. If he loses to Cotto, he loses his middleweight title to another middleweight champion. Think about it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us on Roku at Dwyer Boxing and Sports News or here online at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.